battle of two of the best 308s out there on the market. These are two high-end 308s, but two of the best, of course, in my opinion. And today I'm going to compare the Terran Tactical V7 to the SCAR 17. And so there's not a lot out there that really compares well to the SCAR that I have personal experience with. But even what I know about 308s, man, that field is limited, but the TTI V7 really gives the SCAR a run for its money. Now, they approach the, the battle rifle, the 308 rifle in two very different ways. And of course, I'm gonna cover a lot of that stuff. Just keep in mind, there are so many things on the V7. <laughs> I mean, dude, the list is insane with all of the things they did to try to lighten this rifle up. Pretty incredible. So let's go ahead and look at the features of them. I'm gonna show you some shooting throughout, and then at the end, I'm gonna tell you which one I like the best and why. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Now, a bonus for today's video is that you actually have a chance to win the Terran Tactical V7, and there are so many features on this rifle, way too many to tell you about in a minute or so, but just know that Terran Tactical and V7 came out with one of the coolest 308s on the market. The good thing about our giveaways that we've been doing now, this is our third one, is that we work with a smaller veteran-owned company. So most of the giveaways out there that you see, they're from big companies and your chances of winning them are about as good as winning the lottery. That's not the case with the giveaways we do because again, the pool is so much smaller than those other big giveaways. And all you have to do to enter is literally click the link down in the description, buy yourself a mug, and buying that mug does four things for you. You support my channel directly, so if you like what we do here and you wanna to continue to see it grow, then there you go. There's an amazing opportunity to help the channel out directly. You also support that small veteran-owned company I was just talking about. You also get a pretty awesome mug <laughs> and you get a chance to win an incredible rifle. So again, click the link down below for your chance to win the Terran Tactical V7. Good luck to everybody. All right, so let's start with the, with the V7, all right? One that I don't know as well as the SCAR, if you remember when I did the SCAR review, I took one full year to do that video because I knew zero about long range shooting. So I wanted to get very familiar with that part of firearms. And you guys don't know me too well for rifles, right? But it's something I am trying to break through on and trying to get more into because I just, I enjoy it just like pistols. Uh, ring and steel at 500 yards, there's really not much like it. So you actually have a 14 and a half inch stainless steel fluted barrel. And one thing you're gonna notice as I start going through some of the feet, I'm not gonna tell you about all the features on this gun, but one thing you will notice is that every feature, every part on this gun was meticulously picked. And I don't know that, I wasn't there with Terran Tactical when they designed it, but you can tell reading the parts list that this thing was so well thought out, I couldn't even believe some of the, the, the descriptions. They, I mean, they literally have a description for every part. I just wanna say that's pretty incredible. But anyways, 14 and a half inch barrel. The rest of the length to get you over 16 inches or right at 16 inches is gonna be in the brake and it's pin and welded. So pretty nice right there. You have a key mod rail. I'm more of a fan of M-Lock, but they both do the job that needs to be done. It's a very thin upper rail and it's a 2099 lithium aluminum handguard, okay, which is 13 and a half inches. You can see how it kind of almost makes this 45 degree cut from the start of the Picatinny rail down here. And then you have just a little bit of the, the fluted barrel exposed there. So coming back to the back, you actually have the V7 lower. A lot of the lower parts are made by V7. Hyperfire trigger coming in at like two and a half pounds. Now, when I looked at this on the website, they actually say they come with like 225 round mags and then the plus five or six Terran mag. This one only came with two 10 round Magpul mags. So it didn't come with the magazines that I thought it was gonna come with, which isn't a huge issue, right? I mean, you could buy those mags. If you win a $4,000 gun, it's like, okay, I'll buy a couple mags, you know? But at the same time, it definitely looks much better with this mag. So this is a 20 round P mag. And that's one of the benefits you're gonna get with this gun over the SCAR. The SCAR uses a proprietary magazine, 
where this one does not, okay? So just keep that in mind. Bolt release, of course, 45 degree safety, much easier to engage the safety than it is on the scar. It's a little bit closer to the grip. I think I mentioned this when I was at, actually at the range. Ho grip on this. And now <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you all the features, but listen to this, dude. So you have the a 7068 castle nut, a 7075 quick detach end plate. You have a 2055 aluminum buffer tube that's Teflon coated, by the way, or a Teflon coated rifle spring. You have an H3 buffer. You also have a 7068 magazine catch and release with the diamond plated button. <laughs> then you have DPMS SR25 takedown pins. Literally every part is designed to lighten the gun up. And so I didn't see any actual specs on the gun, but one thing I can tell you, let's just forget the optics for a minute. I could have two hardline pros, which is what I have on the uh, SCAR, amazing scope by the way, but I could have two on this gun and it would probably be lighter. It is a lighter gun. If I had to guess now, don't quote me here, but I'd say six to seven pounds. The SCAR naked, is eight pounds, okay? So there is definitely a pound or two lighter. You can feel it as soon as you pick up the rifle. Now, it could be a distribution thing as far as where they center the weight, but my my, my eye test tells me, and my, my, my hand test, if you will, <laughs> my arm test, tells me that this rifle is definitely lighter than the SCAR. I'll try that little popper right there to the right. Ah, I just missed it. Okay. What was it? To the... That's a hard shot. That one's tough. That's a tough little target right there. There we go. You can see the V7 logo here, and then you see the Terran Tactical logo right there. You have a somewhat flared magwell, all right? So get your mags easier in and out. Dust cover right there, forward assist. Again, these are not GI spec anything on this gun. Radiant Raptor charging handle, and you have that low mass bronze bolt carrier group, and it really is just a incredibly smooth, right? So amazing job there. And then you have the BCM stock right here. Obviously you have multiple positions, you can see the tube is a little bit different. The spring, uh, you can't see the spring, but uh, rest assured, it is a different style spring as well, okay? All right, so on the SCAR 17, you have a 16 and a quarter inch barrel, and then you have their proprietary muzzle brake, cold hammer forged barrel, adjustable gas block up here on the SCAR, and then you have integrated sights. I'm gonna show you something here in a second, by the way, on the sights. If we come back here, you actually have pieces of Picatinny rail that are built onto the gun. So you could, in theory, take these off. You're gonna have some holes underneath this if you want to. So the front end of the SCAR definitely feels wider and bigger um, if that's something that bugs you. I put this, this foregrip on here, right? So that way I can actually get a, a good purchase on the front of the gun. Uh, an angle foregrip would do a uh, would do a fine job as well, but definitely something right here because just grabbing onto this Picatinny rail, it kind of reminds me of the uh, the X95 if you have all of the rail covers off. That's a little bit better system though because it actually covers all of this and it's it's almost not really integrated, but it, it, it just feels a little bit better with the covers on on the X95. Regardless, you actually have the Picatinny rail there the Terran, of course, is going to be a little bit slimmer in the hand, a little bit quicker maybe to pull up, not only because of the weight, because that handguard is just so much uh, lighter feeling and just thinner, you know what I mean? So anyways, there's that pick rail up top, of course, going to move it back here. Now you do have the non-reciprocating versions of the SCAR, 
So those are an option out there, but this is one of the older ones, okay? This is still the reciprocating bolt. Now I have this Bobro mount on here with the Crimson Trace Hardline Pro. That's a big reason why I'm not talking about accuracy because we're giving this rifle away. So I dialed the Terran in and just to be able to hit on steel at various distances, I didn't go through and finally tune that one. Okay, so just, just keep that in mind. Um, but anyways, coming back here, you can reverse this too, by the way. You have an ambidextrous magazine release on the SCAR. You don't on the Terran. You have a 45 degree safety back here. A little bit harder to engage, especially if you have smaller hands. And then the plastic hand grip that this thing actually comes with is junk. I put this kind of rubberized one on here. Feels much better. Coming back to the rear sight, this thing actually came off on me yesterday when I was at the range. I have not reattached it or really look at it, but the, the, the part of the assembly, the actual peephole sight that, that flips up came off. So yeah, there's that. This thing is a violent action when it's cycling back and forth. It's not unmanageable and it's not even really uncomfortable unless you are unsupported. And then you really start to notice that action over and over and over, okay? One benefit you have on the SCAR as well is obviously you can adjust the stock different positions, but it's also side folding. Now this is a cheap piece of crap. This, this is unacceptable on a $4,000 rifle. It's plastic. It doesn't necessarily work very well. I mean, you really have to press this stupid thing. I hate this piece, right? And the only reason I say that is because it's four grand. If this thing was a thousand bucks, I'd be like, oh, okay, I'll just replace it. Uh, you do have a cheek riser on this one as well. And this is like the Ugg boot, right? That's what a lot of gun people call it, the Ugg boot, because it looks like a freaking boot. So anyways, there's that. Both of them are comfortable. Um, it, you know, the cheek riser, I don't really use it a lot with this scope set up anyways, but it's nice that you have that option. And of course you have sling attachments here and then you have them in the front as well. Coming back here, you got your shelf deflector, of course. And what else? Proprietary mags, we already kind of talked about that. So that's pretty much it on the SCAR and the Terran Tactical as far as the features. So what you're gonna get on this one that you won't on the Terran is you're going to get an ambidextrous magazine release and safety. You're gonna get integrated sights when they didn't fly off of the gun. You're gonna get an adjustable gas block, but because you have the adjustable gas system on the SCAR, that's gonna, that, that could help you out, especially if you're running it suppressed. 400 yards. Well, I feel good with that. That was two hits, right? That's two hits, back to back. All right, let's go to 500. Now, with all these extra features that are on the SCAR, you also have more weight. You also have a gun that recoils a little bit more than what the V7 actually does. Now, comparing triggers, there is no comparison here. I'm not gonna pull it. This is basically a standard GI style trigger. The one on the V7 though, I am gonna pull this one. All right, this hyperfire trigger is insane, dude. Two and a half pounds, boom. Reset. right there. Really incredible trigger. And so that's one of the things that bothers me about the SCAR because they're both $4,000 rifles, let's just say, somewhere about around there. Maybe you can get the SCAR for 3,500, you know, it just depends. But you get like this cheap plastic buttstock and you get this cheap mil spec trigger. Now, I don't know about y'all, but when I think about the price of the gun, this was one of my complaints on the SCAR. It's like, dude, it should come with something like this because it's a high-end rifle. 
So the V7 definitely wins there. Uh, the Radiant Raptor charging handle, that really just depends on you, man. Do you like the AR platform? Can you deal with the side charging handle on the SCAR? Um, if you're going to, to go with something like the SCAR, you're definitely gonna wanna upgrade that charging handle so you don't slam your finger on that, uh, on whatever kind of mount that you run because it's so close to the, uh, to the upper receiver there. That's something that can easily be changed. The selector, right? It's easier to get to on the Terran, right? Because it's positioned closer to your hand. Hit it. Cool. So the Hoag style grip, I'm not usually a fan of, of Hoag in general, um, but this one does a pretty good job. It's rubberized. I'm not a huge fan of the finger grooves, but I could, I could do with or without them. It's not like it impeded my shooting in any kind of way. Uh, the way they break down is a little bit different. This is like a traditional AR. The SCAR, again, if you wanna watch more on the SCAR, you can check out my video. I'll card it up here. I'll link it down below. But Regardless, they're both easy to maintain. Point being, these rifles approach things at, at a, from a different perspective, where the V7, they used the lightest, strongest materials they could, but they really wanted to lighten it up. It's almost like a, a, a race gun battle rifle or something. I don't know, dude. I mean, the thing is freaking accurate. Now, both of these rifles are way more accurate than me. And unfortunately, when I shot them, I just was having an off day. It's like once I got to 500 yards, I was really kind of struggling. And it didn't matter if I had the Vortex or the Hardline Pro. At first, I was thinking, by the way, here's my quick review of the 1 to 6 by 24 Viper uh, PST. I'm not a fan. I am just, I don't like the eye relief. I'm just not a fan of this optic. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. But I thought this was my issue. I was like, okay, once I get the Hardline Pro on the SCAR, I think I'm gonna have some better luck at 500. And I, I hit at 500, just not consistently. Um, so anyways, and, and that could have been some of my zeroing too, man. Like I said, I know I'm gonna take this thing right back off and we're gonna give this thing away. So I wasn't really concerned with getting it super dialed in, uh, you know, whatever. I can come up with a million excuses. One, one excuse I can say legitimately though, my, uh, my illuminated reticle, <laughs> the, the battery died, but regardless. It's the SCAR, it's just a heavier rifle, right? And it's a wider rifle. I love the SCAR. It's, it's been my favorite 308 rifle since I've had it, you know? And I don't have a ton of experience with them, um, but at the same time, that is an amazing gun. And I, I just, I love it, dude. Uh, the non-reciprocating version, I would rather have that if I'm being honest with you, but you know, it is what it is. A little bit felt, a little bit less felt recoil on the SCAR than what they did on the V7, which, which shocked me, not only because it reciprocates, but because I was thinking they lighten this thing up so much that you would feel more mass, but because you have that low mass bolt and the lightweight part, it just, it, this is an incredibly fun and just awesome shooting gun, man. this over it's pulling my earplug out got it I'm gonna try that small target to the. I'm gonna try that small target to the left. That one hit on the left. It did. At the end of the day, you know, I think that the Terran Tactical V7, I think they give you a little bit more 
for your money, for that four grand that you're gonna spend, upgraded trigger, um, a better handguard setup all the way around. I don't, there's some people that are like so hell bent on not switching their platform from an AR to a, to a side charging handle, or if they run an AK, they don't want anything else. You know, um, I can run different guns. You know, I can get accustomed to, to one or the other. That's not a problem for me. Um, I enjoy different style rifles, which is why I love the SCAR, the X95, all those kind of guns so much. But man, I just think you get more with the V7. I, I really do. And, and, and the trigger and just the small attention to details, I think are better. The cheap stock, the cheap trigger, you know, just some of those things just don't make sense to me on the scar. And then the sight flew off as well. These are just things that are unacceptable on a $4,000 freaking dollar rifle. That's the end of the day. Am I going to sell the scar after this review? No. I love that thing and I will continue to shoot it, man. And I, I plan on doing a thousand round update on that gun, which is why I haven't fixed anything on it yet. Uh, I say anything, but the, the, the sight coming off. So... Regardless, man, I think the V7, they just give you a little bit more for your money. I like both rifles. They are both amazing. If you don't shoot 308, you're kind of used to 223, 556, whatever. 308 is one of my favorite rounds, dude. It just hits hard and it is, <laughs> it is so awesome. Hitting steel at 500 yards, man. And there was a little gopher out there, by the way, at 200 yards. Oh my God, dude, that thing. It, it really, like I said, I was off that day, but that gopher, I'm going to go back for him and make sure I put some more shots on target the next time I go out there. So let me know what you think about the SCAR versus the V7. Again, make sure you get entered, dude. Please get entered. I want to see one of y'all win this freaking rifle. And if you do, make sure you tag me on Instagram with your photos. Thank you guys for joining me. See you in the next one. And as always, hold them down.